We have some feel-good news for you here today, folks. It's feel-good not for some of the people involved, obviously, and a lot of the normal people who are being directly negatively impacted by this, but feel-good nonetheless, because I have the duty today of reporting to you that there are now fewer ultra-processed food manufacturers in America than there were just at the beginning of the month of September. And they all, all of this paring down of, the, of a certain ultra-processed food industry come from a specific sector of it, which is the plant-based meat alternative sector. As it turns out, people are really at realizing that during an economic downturn, driving people towards plant-based meats is a, is a luxury. Now, the advocates for such diets will continue their weird ways. They won't get the memo that what they promote is essentially luxury food. And I'm getting, I'm guessing that they will never actually admit that what they're promoting is a luxurious way of life. We here in the proper human diet sphere of things, we understand that human beings have been eating this the way we advocate for. Except for this blip of modern history, they've been eating this way for going back to the beginning of the species. And this, the alternative that we're being told is the way of the future, the way we have to eat, even if we have to impose it on you using first market mechanisms and then government action. That's the way people should eat, and according to them, humans have eaten. Because as you may be aware, the people who are now telling us to abandon eating meat for all the green reasons or whatever, they have invented anthropological data to suggest that's how human beings have eaten. Misinterpreting clear signs that uh, ancient peoples were going through tough times when they find frozen remains with of people with things like barley in their stomach or dandelions or whatever because the animals that they would hunt weren't around and the whatever they might garnish it with from plants that stuff wasn't around either so they were eating things human beings didn't really eat at the time we've seen this before if you're actually familiar with the you know the whole problem with archaeology in general is a lot of times a lot of fossil remains are just manufactured anyway <laughs> that caught more than once just inventing fossil remains. Well, that's neither here nor there. Today, I have some good, feel-good news for you. And that is that three startups are going away. Two have already announced full closures, and one is clearly on its way there. So, our first story takes us to <laughs> website Food Business News Site, which ran with this, this story with this feel-good headline. Two plant-based meat startups to cease operations. Now, obviously, for the record, I'm not happy that people are losing their jobs here. But old, fewer ultra-processed food producers in the world taking people away from a proper human diet and misleading people about nutrition and the rest of it, I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I do feel bad for the people who are going to lose their jobs in this economy, but I hope that they, and I do hope that they bounce back. But I think here, the net positive here, or the net effect on this, the culture with, a few, with fewer of these operations around is not a bad thing. Let's dive into the story here, though, for some for some actual context. Quote, This past January, Hooray Foods launched an equity crowdfunding campaign with a goal of raising $500,000 to broaden distribution and accelerate research and development to expand its product line. At that time, the product was sold in more than 1,000 grocery stores, including Whole Foods Market nationwide. The startup previously raised several seed funding rounds backed by investors, Former Duncan Chief Executive David Hoffman, Lyra Growth Partners, Evolution VC Partners, Gangill, Sand Hill Angels, Stray Dog Capital, and Glasswall Syndicate. On September 7th, Hooray Food shared an update on its Facebook and Instagram accounts noting that, quote, after four years on the market and over five million bacon strips made, we have come to the difficult decision to cease our business operations. The company added, the economics of running a company of this size simply do not match our revenue and we are unable to continue producing our product for sale. Nowadays, two years ago, introduced its plant-based nuggets made from seven ingredients, including organic yellow peas, whole wheat flour, maple fiber, sunflower oil, yeast extract, mushroom extract, and water. Prior to launching the business, co-founders Max Elder and Dominic Grabinski had experience in the food industry. Mr. Elder was a plant-based advocate with Nestle, General Mills, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Nutrition Program. Mr. Grabinski was an agriculture engineer at various ingredient companies, including Cargill and DSM. Last year, Nowadays closed an unsubscribed seed round at $7 million that brought its total funding to date to nearly $10 million. The startup planned to use the capital to scale its proprietary whole-cut technology platform 
and commercialized new alternative chicken products. The seed round was led by Stray Dog Capital with additional strategic support from Standard Meat Company, a privately owned meat processor that supplies restaurant chains, supermarkets, and club stores. Other investors include Veg and Tru Invest Trust, Tenacious Ventures, Cornucopian Capital, and Good Protein Fund. New investors include Selva Ventures, Aventura Accelerator Fund, Food Hack, Gangles, Beyond Impact, and Unpopular Ventures, plus angel investors Rachel Mansfield, Varsha Rao, and Brandon Shanfield. On September 13th, Mr. Elder shared on LinkedIn, Our journey over the past three years has been extraordinary. From commercializing a product in less than nine months, patenting novel extrusion technology, launching into retail with Whole Foods Market, establishing partnerships with award-winning restaurants nationwide, and feeding lots of friendly faces along the way, it's been an incredible ride. <laughs> End quote. Now, these companies going away doesn't mean their products are going to go away. In fact, that uh, second company there listed some innovative things it's done. They're going to sell those proprietary secrets, probably to the big manufacturers. You're probably going to get Morningstar Farms or whoever owns them buying that extrusion technology. That fake bacon from the first company, that's probably going to get bought by them too, or some company like it. This stuff isn't going away. It's just there are going to be fewer companies offering it, which is kind of the nature of the way the market seems to work anyway in the modern world, much to my personal chagrin. I would probably prefer more decentralization in the food system, even in the processed food system. If we have to have a processed food system, at least decentralize it. That is my solution to most of these things. But unfortunately, that's not where we are. Now, it's this is actually not the only stories I have for you of this. These are this we have another one from Denver. So if we get the Denver Post, which ran this headline: Boulder-based meaty, that's with an I, foods maker of plant-based meat alternatives, cutting 20% of its workforce. Startup maker of meat alternatives says it will move some employees into new jobs as well as decommission Boulder plant. And it's the same kind of news story that we're seeing here, folks. They discovered, I mean, they won't say it, but they discovered that the costs of doing what they're doing are beyond what the market will bear for them in profit. And it goes back to a very basic thing. Human beings really don't want to eat this stuff, at least not in the Western world. There are cultural th reasons for it. There are obvious health reasons for it. People seem to intuitively know that this stuff really isn't something that most people should eat. That when they do eat it, they feel weird. Afterwards, that was my experience when I tried a Beyond Burger once or some other equivalent several years ago when things first hit the market. Tried it once, felt really weird and off after I ate it. Did not feel good until the next day after my body was done with all that stuff. And I never touched the stuff again. I think most people get that kind of experience when they try it. Because the data, the research data shows us consistently that people are willing to give the stuff a try. It's just that they don't try it again. Why is that? Because it's not part of a proper human diet. People kind of intuit it. And all the propaganda for that way of eating will never take that into account. It will never undermine what your instinct tells you. Plus, there's the other thing. We can expect more stories like this as the economy continues to just stumble along. Either until we get new political leadership or the political leadership we have decides to change course and stop doing the dumb things they're doing that are undermining the American economy which then undermines the world economy. <laughs> That's how it works when you're the major world economic power. During economic downturns, people can't eat this stuff. They can't afford it, so they go and eat chicken. That's what you're going to see a lot of sales of probably in the next year, two years, is chicken and pork, because those are the cheap meat alternate. Those are the cheap meat and cheap protein sources for most people. Curious, are you happy to see these uh, companies going down? Or are you... What are you planning to do for yourself in your own meat needs? Since this is mostly carnivore and keto people in this who watch these videos, what are you doing for protein? I'm curious, especially in this economic downturn, what are you going to do? Are you going to pare back your red meat? Are you going to buy cheaper versions of butter, cheaper eggs? What are you doing? I'm very curious. So let me know in the comments, please. And like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to share this on social media, that helps too. I'm Anthony Stein, The Practical Carnivore. Thanks for tuning in today.